Hey guys, welcome back. We'll continue with the book Cracking Codes with Python and today we're going to have a look at our first encryption program. We're going to start with the reverse cipher, which is basically taking any string and then printing it in reverse order. The reverse cipher is the first cipher we're going to take a closer look at and it simply reverses any string that is provided. So let's have a look at how we can implement the reverse cipher and to follow along you can head over to inventwithpython.com the link is also in the description down below. And let's start out by writing the program for the reverse cipher. For that we open up idle and we can go over to file, new file and then save this file under reverse cipher.py. Now to get started implementing our reverse cipher program we first are going to define a message string which we're going to use and then reverse. We also need a variable for our new translated cipher which is going to include the reversed message. Now since we don't have that message yet, the string is going to be empty and then we are going to replace that string with the reversed message. Now to reverse the message we are going to use the len function and the len function gives back the length or the number of characters of a value that we provide. So in this case here we provide message, our string up here, as an argument and the number of characters will be evaluated by the length methods and returned here. We're then going to subtract 1 from this number and we're going to store that back in a variable i. Next we're going to use a while loop, so we are going to iterate a certain number of times and here we are taking the variable i that we used so far and we are going to repeat some certain steps and change the value of i until this condition here is no longer met. That means if i is not greater than or equal to 0 then the execution will stop. So specifically while i is greater than or equal to zero we're going to perform these kind of steps and the steps in here, the section here that's called a block. And we can see that because we indented the code here. So within the indentation here below the while statement this part of code will be executed and iterated over. Specifically we are going to make an adjustment to our translated variable that we have up here which is an empty string initially and we're going to add something to the end of it. Specifically we're going to take characters of message but we are not going to take the entire string but only individual characters. And to reference those as we learned in the last video we can use indexing and of course we need to reference the index. And if you think back to the last video we know that the index is zero based that means we start counting from zero. So this would be index 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on and so forth. That's also the reason why we subtract 1 here because the len function that we're using is going to return the number of characters but if we want to reference an index of course we need to subtract 1 because we are starting counting from zero. And then we can simply take the variable i which of course now corresponds to the index of the very last character here and we're going to take that and add that to our string. So in the first iteration we're going to take the dot here at the very end and we're going to add that using string concatenation which we also learned about last time to that empty string. So at the end of the first iteration here translated will be updated. Specifically we are going to take the empty string and we're going to add the dot to it and that again is stored back into translated. Then we also need to update i because otherwise if we were to use the same index each time then of course we would just keep on adding this dot here at the very end. We don't want to do that and therefore we subtract one from it. That means in the next iteration we are not going to take a look at the dot character here but now we are focusing on the next character here which is d. Now in the second iteration we are still checking if i is greater than or equal to zero which is still true and then we repeat the next step. Now we know that translated now consists of the dot character so we start out and we now add message at index i. Since we reduce the value of i by 1 we now know we are adding the second to last character so d to it. So now our new translated string consists of dot d. So we reverse those two last characters here basically. And then we keep on going we decrease the value of i again and we keep on going until i is greater than or equal to 0. While i is still equal to 0 we of course add index 0 here so we basically by that time 
will have moved all the way down from the very end of the string all the way to the beginning and we added those strings to translate it here but in reverse order to message and then we are decreasing i so now i which is zero at the very last iteration is now decreased to minus one and after that we are still checking this condition here and then we are having a look if i is greater than or equal to zero which of course in the case of minus one is not the case and then at the very end of our program of course we are going to print out translate it to the new string so before we do anything else let's actually run our program to see the result so here we can select run and then run module and then run module or we can just press f5 on the keyboard now and as we run the program we can indeed see that here we have the reverse string we can double check that by taking this message here that was printed out copying it and if we switch over to our program again let's replace the message here with the string that was just printed out so this of course is the result of running the program so if we run that again we should actually get back the original string so let's just do that let's run our program again with the updated message and now we can see indeed this was our original message so that works properly but now that we know that our program works let's actually have a closer look at how it works in detail so the first thing that might be unclear is the len function that we used here so just as an example we could take len and then for example pass the first word three of the message here in it and then press enter and now we get back the value of five and that's because if we count the number of characters one two three four five these are indeed five characters now let's instead pass our entire message as an argument to the len function which is effectively what we do in our program here and let's see what the result is so in this case we get back 49 so we have a total of 49 characters and that includes of course individual letters here but also for example space characters as over here but also other characters for example the period at the end next up we have this while loop here of course where we are looping over each individual character using the value of i which is basically here the return value of the len function of course minus one and let's actually have a closer look what actually happens when we run this while statement here for that let us actually make a small adjustment to our program here and let's just move our print statement here to the very beginning of our while loop we also can keep track of the value of i so let's also print out that here after we print out our string now with this adjustment in place let's run our program one more time and let's have a look at the output and let's go up to the very top we can see at first we get a value of 48 printed out in fact above that you can see there's some empty area here and if we look at our code we know of course that translated the translated string we are using which is a result is of course an empty string so that's basically printed out here but of course the empty string doesn't contain any characters so it's basically a blank line here after that we are printing out the value of i and as we just saw before the length of the string we're looking at had 49 characters so we are decreasing it by one here though and storing that in i so therefore we have a value of 48 and now we are taking our string in this case we have the reverse string and we are having a look at the very last item here so a character at index 48 which corresponds to t and on the second iteration of our loop so we decrease i here by one after of course storing that last character here in our string we of course then start the second iteration of the loop so now we have the character t that we are printing out which is our translated string and then we are printing out the value of i which has been decreased to 47. now we take that index of 47 look at our string again and at position 47 we have the h character here which of course we are then concatenating to our translated string which as we now just had the character t in it so now we have th in it then we are decreasing the value of i by one again which gets us to 46 and we just repeat those steps and of course we keep looping through here until i has a value of minus one at which point we stop execution so if we scroll down here we can see that our string is being extended and here at the very end we have our entire string that we reversed and here we can see we have an index of zero now there's one last aspect that might be unclear and that is this condition here 
after the while keyword. So here we have this condition i greater than or equal to zero. This is a Boolean expression and this is going to evaluate to either true or false. So basically we are checking if the variable i is greater than or equal to zero. And if that's true, this is going to evaluate to true Boolean value. If that's not the case, it's going to evaluate to false. We can also check that ourselves if we just type in an expression, for example, is three greater than or equal to two. If we press enter, we can see we get back the value true, the Boolean value. If we type in is three greater than or equal to four, for example, then of course we get back false. And if this expression here evaluates to true, then the while statement will be executed and we have another iteration of our block of code that is indented below here. If this evaluates to false, then the execution will stop and we will no longer continue the execution of the while statement. Now at the moment, our program always encrypts or decrypts this message that we hard coded. This is a good starting point, but we can definitely improve upon it because we want to be able to decrypt or encrypt any message that we provide. And for that, we can update the message variable here. We already covered in the last video that we cannot just provide a direct string, but we can also use a function. Specifically, we can use the input function. And here we are simply using the input function. We are showing a message. So the user sees enter message and can provide any kind of string. We are then going to store whatever the user provides in our message variable and we are repeating the same steps. And since we are inferring the length of the characters using the len method, this of course will automatically adjust based on how long the string is. So our code here works just the same, no matter which kind of entries we provide. So to try this out, let's just run our program one more time. And now rather than executing right away, we are now being asked to enter a message. So here we could, for example, say we are going to type in hello world. And now we press enter and then we can see this is our encrypted message. So basically each of the characters here has been reversed and this is our encrypted message that we get back. Of course, we could double check that again by copying the result here and then just running our program one more time. And this time we can type in our or paste in our encrypted message, press enter and now we get back hello world, which is our original message. And this reverse cipher is of course a very basic and definitely not secure encryption method, but it's just a starting point. But to cover it in more detail, let's actually have a look at the practice questions. And here the first question is, what does the following piece of code print to the screen? We have a print statement here. Inside of that, we are using the len function as before, and we pass the string hello to it. So we are basically counting the number of characters, one, two, three, four, five. So here, len with a value of hello pass to it should give us back five and we add this to the return value of passing hello the string as an argument to the length function so this also should give us back five so we are adding five to five so she, we should get back a value of 10. Let's try this out by taking this code opening idle the interactive shell and typing or pasting this in and here indeed we can see the value of 10 is printed. Next up, we are being asked what this code here prints. We have a variable i that's set to zero, and then we have another while loop, and we are checking while this condition is true, so while i is less than three, we're going to print out hello. And then after that, we are going to increase the value of i by one. So the first iteration, i will be zero, so we're printing out hello. Then we're increasing i to one, we're checking if one is less than three, which is true. So we're printing hello again, we're increasing i from one to two. We're checking if two is less than three, which is still true. So we're printing hello again. Now we're increasing the value of i from two to three. We're checking if three is less than three, which is false. So we stop execution. So basically we printed out hello three times. Let's again verify that in our interactive shell. So first we set i to a value of zero and then we have our while loop here. And as we execute that, we can see we print out hello three times, just as we anticipated. Next up, we have another while loop. So here it's a little bit more complicated. We set i to a value of zero. Then we have a second variable. This one here stores a string, hello. And then we 
have another while loop where we are checking as long as i is less than 5, we're going to execute this code. Of course, we initialized i to 0, so at first we're going to execute this. Then we are taking our spam variable here, and then we are going to add some other string to it. Specifically, we take the value of i to index into our spam variable here, and we are going to add that to spam itself. So here we start out with the string hello, and then we are adding spam at the index of zero. So that's of course h. And then we increase the value of i by one. So now i has a value of one. On the next iteration, we're checking if i is less than five. And that's true, of course, since i now has a value of one. We're then taking the value of spam, which by now is hello, capital H. And we add the character at index one to it, which is the e. And then we increase this and we keep on going. And at the end, we print out the value of spam. So by the end of it, of course, we should have looped over this while statement here five times from zero until i has a value of five, in which case five is less than five is going to be to false. So we should have a string that's printed out that says hello, hello. And let's verify that in our interactive shell. We set i to zero, spam to hello. We have our while loop and then we print out the result of spam. So here we can see indeed hello, hello is being printed out. And finally, we have actually two while statements that are nested. First, we initial i to zero. Then we have a while statement that checks if i is less than four. And then if that's the case, we have another while loop. At first, i is of course zero. So therefore, it is less than four. So we are inside of this block of code. And we are now checking for the next while loop, which is nested inside of the first one. Here we are checking if i is less than 6, which of course is true because 0 is less than 6. And then we increase the value of i by 2. So we add 2 to 0, so i now has a value of 2. And we print out the value of i, which is 2, so we print out 2. Then we go back to the inner while loop, because we are basically looping over this while loop in here until this condition is no longer true. And then we leave the scope of this inner block and we go out to the outer block and then check the condition of the outer while loop again. But on the second iteration of this inner loop, i has a value of two, two is less than six. So again, we add two to it. So now i has a value of four. We print out four. We check if four is less than six, which of course is true. So we add two to it. Now i has a value of six. We print out six. And then we check if six is less than six, which is false. So therefore we stop execution of this while loop and we go to the outer block of code. We are checking if six is less than four, which is also false. So we stop the execution here. So effectively we should have printed out two, four and six. So let's switch over to idle to our interactive shell. We set i to zero, we use our two while loops. Let's run that code. And we can see indeed two, four and six are being printed out. We learned about the reverse cipher as our first encryption program. Along the way, we learned about Boolean statements, comparison operators, and also the while loop. In the next video, we're going to cover the Caesar cipher. Feel free to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date about any new videos, and see you guys in the next video.